from Moore Gymnasium on the campus of Bethune-Cookman University in beautiful downtown Daytona Beach, Florida. It's time for the second match of tonight's doubleheader featuring the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats and the Jackson State Tigers. The Wildcats enter the game three and two in the SWAC with wins over Florida and A&M, Southern and Mississippi Valley State, and a close loss to Arkansas Pine Bluff last time out. Jackson State is rolling. They are four and one in the SWAC and tied with Alabama State and Grambling State for first place at four and one. The Wildcats are tied for second with UAPB at three and two with wins for Jackson State over Alcorn, Alabama State, Alabama a &M, and Texas Southern. Good news for the Wildcats today as they get back Zion Harmon as I bring in Henson White. Henson, Zion is back and the Wildcats should be scoring high tonight. Yep, Zion Harmon being back is a huge get for this Wildcats offense. He did a great job while he was out. But obviously, you know, you're leading a sister throughout this, even now at the season, you're leading field goal percentage guy, uh, free throw percentage guy rather, obviously is somebody you want back in, you know, these tougher games in your in conference. The Wildcats three and two and fell last time to Arkansas Pine Bluff 76-72 in a game where the Wildcats were within two with less than a minute to go, but Joe French, the former Wildcat, iced them from the line with a couple of free throws. Before we get into today's contest, it's time for the Southeast Toyota dealer's keys to the game. Henson, what do you got? So the key for the Wildcats is Jacoby Petty. He has played lights out in Zion Harmon's absence, and he will look to continue it tonight. He is, you know, a kind of spark plug for this offense shooting 50% for the field, and has 290 points total, 60.1, leading the team, averaging 64 what a game, leading the team. And for the Tigers, winning the battle on the board. They're second to SWAC in rebounds in total. They have the leading rebounder, Zeke Cook, at 6'6", 220 going to be patrolling the boards as well. So obviously it'll be very important for them to keep up their rebounding habits and for the Wildcats to get Jacoby Hetty involved. A couple of injury misses for Jackson State today. Jamie Mitchell, the top three points percentage shooter for them is out. He shoots 54% from the on the arc, as well as freshman Delisle Williams and junior Deshaun Ruffin, the Ole Miss transfer. Another big miss for them is Romel Mansell. The team leader in blocks last season, the 6'9 senior, is also out with an injury. For the Wildcats, it's a clean bill of health. We mentioned that Zion Harmon is back after uh, a hand injury kept him out of the last three games. And Elijah Halsey, who has been battling an ans ankle injury, will not start, but he will be available off the bench tonight in a limited capacity. H how important is that, especially after the we saw last game with the women's team struggle with injuries? Yeah, it is very important in this SWAC conference to have your full strength lineup at all times. It makes it easier on everyone to have that consistency. When you have a lot of injuries and especially sporadic ones, you have lineups and guys who don't play often being thrust into these roles without much, you know, prep time. So it's obviously important for them to be there. Wildcats second in the SWAC in scoring 40, uh, sorry, 74 points per game, and they are six and one at home. Their only loss, a 69-79 loss to Grambling State. Looking to defend more gymnasium floor again. Jackson State, 70 points per game, but they give up 77, which is one of the higher in the SWAC, even though they are great on the boards. Yeah, you can't, you know, it's gonna be one thing that they're gonna look to fix throughout this season is getting that, you know, allowing that lower rate and trying to work, work through that as the season progresses. Shotting lineups, Jackson State sends Zeke Cook. We mentioned him, the top rebounder in the SWAC. Ken Evans is their top scorer at 19 points per game. Watch out for the redshirt junior from Jackson, Mississippi. He will let it fly. Colty Young from Starkville, a junior, will start for Jackson State and rounding it out 
is Trayon Johnson, the senior from Chicago, Illinois. Wonder if he grew up playing against some of the Chicago kids on the Wildcats squad. For the Wildcats, they'll start Jacoby Henney, Zion Harmon, Deshaun Dyson, Reggie Ward, and James Henderson Jr. gets the start at center today. Could be a tough matchup for him as he goes head to head with Johnson. You know, James Henderson Jr. is an uh, voracious competitor. You know, he is a, he's the kind of guy you want on your team, you want on your offense and your defense. Never get, never looks to have his head down, always is in the play. As the Wildcats get hyped pregame here. Wildcats looking to move to four wins in the SWAC before a big matchup Monday night with Alcorn State. The Braves are two and three right now. They're playing Florida A&M today. We have some finals from the women's games from earlier. Of course, Jackson State beating Bethune Cooper 81-65 here. Texas Southern beat Alabama A&M 61-55 and Florida A&M beat Alcorn State 60-56. We told you, watch out for Florida A&M after they played Bethune-Cookman tough in this building to start conference play back in the first week of January. Yep, so at conference, anything can happen, and the Wildcats will be looking for that to fall their way this game against the Tigers. We will keep you updated on scores from around the conference on the women's side and the men's side as we get the, let's just introduce you to this more gym atmosphere. We are set for basketball here in Moore Gymnasium. Thank you for sticking around for the second game of our doubleheader. Michael Trevino, Henson White talking you through this one. As the Wildcats back at home after a trip to UAPB in Mississippi Valley State, a trip for the men's team that ended one and one. Jackson State, the all blue trimmed in red and white wins the tip, they attack the basket. Two viewers left and the Wildcats in the home goal, James Henderson against Johnson all the way out high, clears out the paint for Colty Young. And now Zeke Cook fade away, front of the iron no good, Deshaun Dyson grabs the board. Deshaun Dyson, we mentioned Jacoby Hetty and Zion Harmon, but he is the third head of the Hydra as Zion Harmon announces his return with a three. Guess who's back, Zion Harmon. Just saw the space open up and just took it, showing that he isn't feeling the effects of whatever he had going on. He's struggling with a hand injury the past couple of days. Seems to be okay early on today. There's a three in kind from Jackson State's Colty Young. It's missed. Zion with a full head of steam backs up to the wing. Henderson sets the screen up top for Ooh. Reggie Ward. And it's bounced back to Zion, rips it into Ward, underneath blocked by Johnson. A second time and a jump ball. It'll be Wildcat ball on the alternating possession. Reggie Ward was getting harassed in the paint there, trying to go up with that second effort and was just getting just bullied. Trayon Johnson, the transfer from Southern Arkansas Tech. Last year, only nine minutes and two points a game for Jackson State playing some important minutes here tonight. Harmon oh. unopposed to the rack. And boy, did we miss that. And you see there's a little bit of tape on Harmon's wrist, but other than that, he looks pretty okay. He's got the first five points of the contest. Five nothing, Bethune Cookman. 18-24 to go first half. Adams drives to the paint, lays it in. <laughs> And it already a timeout by head coach Mo Williams. And if you're wondering, Mo Williams, that name sounds familiar. Yes, it's the Mo Williams you are thinking of. 14-year NBA career, an all-star, and an NBA championship 
with the Cavaliers in 2016. Yep, and if you're wondering if that's that, yeah, that is the 3-1 comeback, the pictures, the memes, all that stuff. That was what he was a part of with LeBron James. That's so funny to come out of our mouths in this commentary booth down here in Daytona Beach, Florida. But basketball runs deep across the you know southern United States. Yep. Mo Williams played two seasons at Alabama. He spent two years as the head coach at Alabama State and now in his second season with Jackson State. And his son, Kadarius, is one of the assistant coaches for Jackson State. And he has said in an interview, it's really great to be able to have that opportunity to coach with his son. Reggie Ward flips it ahead to Harmon as the Wildcats break the press. 18 minutes to go, first quarter, 5-2. Wildcats on top. Jacoby Hetty hasn't been heard from yet today. He goes downhill, tough finish at the window, won't go rebound to Ken Evans Jr. Evans oh. throws a pass behind Kiwan Johnson's head, and it's out of bounds. Little fast pitch baseball, a little bit too much mustard on that pass. Throws it ends up being behind his teammate there. And it looks like both of these teams want to play a pretty fast-paced game. None of this sitting in a half-court set for 30 seconds. We want to run. Hetty thought about the three. Eventually just goes baseline to Henderson. Henderson backing down Zeke Cook. Left hand finish, won't go. And Reggie Ward picks up the pieces. Reggie Ward has done a great job to start this game out of just not giving up on possessions. Ward just under 10 points a game at nine and a half for him. Also four and a half rebounds. And he has been a big part of this Bethune-Cookman offense that averages 74.7 points a game and another turnover. And if Jackson State wants to run with the Wildcats, more Petty gym. lets his defender go by and scores. More Jim would love for that to happen. They love these fast paced, quick games. They love fast break dunks and opportunities of that nature. So playing at home, and if you're gonna play this style, this is not the place you wanna play. Nine to two, Bethune Cookman, 16.46 to go. Underneath it goes, Cook, dump off, Johnson scores. A lot of contact, no whistle. And the Wildcats immediately into the front court with Jacoby Hetty. Hetty pulls up from the elbow, split splash. A tough shot Jacoby Hetty makes there, fading away at the elbow, just pretty. 11 to four now, Bethune Cookman. We welcome those of you watching on the Cat Eye Network on YouTube. Thank you for joining us for the second of our doubleheader today. Johnson, correction, that's Cook, pull up jumper, left it short. And Reggie Ward has the miss. Hetty again. Zion cut in front of him. Hetty, all kinds of contact, and his shot hits the back iron. Reggie Ward gets the offensive rebound, put back, still no foul, and Jackson State wants to run. In transition, look out, here is Adams, high off glass, won't go. Wildcats with the ball. Back to Deshaun Dyson. He goes to the lane and loses it. We have seen a ton of contact to start this game out and not a foul. James Henderson with a great defensive stop on Johnson. Yeah. Evans twisting, turning. Finally, a foul is called. And more gymnasium lets the referee hear about it. We saw about every form of contact possible to start this game out without a foul call. We go to the first media timeout. Visit your local Toyota dealers today. Toyota, let's go places. And home conference play continues for Bethune-Cookman basketball Monday, January 29th for a SWAC doubleheader. Come out and catch all the BCU hoops action as we host Alcorn State for a pair of critical SWAC contests. The women tip things off at 5 p.m. with the men following at 9. That is a change from our normal schedule, 9 p.m. for the men's game. Admission for the women's game is free, but student ticket pickup for the men's game begins at 8 a.m. on Monday. Can't make it some more. Watch the women's game live on youtube.com slash Network and the men's game on the national stage because we come to you live on ESPN2. 
9 p.m. Wildcats hosting Alcorn State. No tickets available at the door. The only way to get it is to pick up a student ticket with a valid BCU ID at the BCU box office beginning 8 a.m. Monday, January 29th. It's going to be a raucous atmosphere in Moore for that one. Yeah, Moore Gymnasium is going to be, I mean, as you can see, not right now, obviously. You're looking at Coach Theus getting his game plan into his players, but it is packed out right now, and it's going to be the same way when we're on ESPN2 on the big screen. Sports Center top plays and all that business. I mean, there were a couple of plays so far this season for the Wildcats that I think fit that description. Um, Reggie Ward's big hammer against Florida A&M notwithstanding. Yeah. <laughs> Zion Harmon making some big plays early. He's got five points. Jacoby Hetty four, Reggie Ward two. Two each for Adams and Johnson for Jackson State as the Wildcats lead 11 to four, but the Tigers will get the first opportunity at the free throw line after James Henderson picked up his first foul and the seven footer Elijah Halsey comes in. He is dealing with a little bit of an ankle injury, so do not be surprised if Halsey doesn't get a lot of minutes. Usually the starter, the sophomore out of Jacksonville, or excuse me, the sophomore out of Orlando. They're gonna get on you for that one. They are, and I deserve all of it. First free throw is good for Ken Evans Jr. This is a man whose name we will be saying a lot tonight. The redshirt junior from Jackson, Mississippi, played his entire career at, Red, at uh, Jackson State, is averaging 19 points per game. That's second in the SWAC. Second only to Tyreon Joseph of Southern, and we saw firsthand how deadly he is. 11 to six, Bethune Cookman, 15, 16 to go first half. Couple of ball screens out high. Harmon splits a double team, floats it up, no good. Halsey taps the rebound, but only to Johnson. And Jackson State out and running. Into the corner, Johnson as Adams didn't take the three. In and out on a three from Keontae Cornelius. And it's Wildcat ball. And Zion did a great job, even, though, even on the bigger, much bigger defender. Johnson 6'11". Wins that rebound, it gets a team rebound for his team there, and gets Wildcat possession. 11 to six, BCU. Harmon rifles it to Ward in the post. Almost had it ripped away by Cornelius, and it is a jump ball possession arrow favors Jackson State. And coach, Theus in deep consultation with Zion Harmon, just trying to get him back to game speed after he missed the last couple of games. But they're up 11 to six, but they have been scoreless the last 153 and Jackson State's gone on a little bit of a run. Chase Adam, here's a three from the wing, it's good. That's Keontae Cornelius, the junior from Spring, Texas. And it's 11 to nine. Pulse, extra pass to Ward. Ward spins past the defender and has it tapped away, and it's a four on O. Two hand jam by Kiwan Johnson. Tie game at 11. 7 0 run for Jackson State. Into the corner. Deshaun Dyson doesn't take the triple. Literally a four. Look out. Oh! It's a beautifully executed out. For Jacoby Heading. As soon as I was about to say something, I saw it setting up and I shut myself up. Jacoby Heady rises up for that alley -oop, does a great job finishing that opportunity to get the energy flowing back in the more gymnasium. Cornelius tries another three, left it short. Great defense by Heady. And now Dyson's on a run, and he throws it down! More gymnasium explodes back-to-back -back highlight plays from <laughs> Zion Harmon, Hetty, and Dyson. You know, Dyson isn't that tall, but he's got some hops on there and slams it down, and now it's Jackson State ball again. They try to trap Adams. Johnson underneath to the cutting. He wants Johnson. It's a dunk contest at Moore. 
And the Wildcat bench is screaming for a technical foul. And after that women's game. And the referees will talk it over as Reggie Ward comes out in favor of DJ Carter Hollinger. No text called, Mo Williams on the court imploring his players. I'm sure they saw the women's game, right? Yeah. With all those technical fouls and intentional fouls were called. 15-13 Wildcats after a frantic couple of minutes. DJ, mid-range, no. Halsey Oboard, kick out. Harmon, long three, yes! Whistles and a stoppage of play. And I think we might have the under 12 media here. Yeah, and it looks like Q, uh, Q John Johnson, I think got hit in the eye or the face or something. Some at some point during that possession. It is currently 18 to 13. No timeouts have been called. So we will remain here. I guess we're going to get away with that with uh, no harm, no foul. 18 to 13, Bethune Cookman. With 12.37 to go in the first half. Kenevin Jr. hounded by Deshaun Dyson off to Kevion Hunt. Evans gets it back in the corner, around the screen, guarded by Halsey, rifles it underneath, floater good from Zeke Cook. And the ball movement offensively for Jackson State is very impressive. He Hetty, oh a three. It's good again. I don't think the uh, us in the booth got the memo that today was going to be highlight play day because Jacoby Hetty just shot that from his house. Zion's hit two long ones. Ken Evans Jr. misses. Great board by DJ. Long pass. Dyson alley oop. Oh. Hetty. Oh, it was oh, just a little bit too almost. far in front of him. Almost. Jackson State looks to punish. Oh, my oh, goodness. DJ Carter Hollinger absolutely rejected. Timeout on the floor. It's like there's landmines going off here. It, <laughs> and the, I, I mean, after the women's game didn't go quite the plan, no better way to get the energy pumping back in the more gymnasium than some highlight plays, some key blocks, some alley-oops, an audacious alley-oop attempt from Deshaun Dyson and Jacoby Hetty that almost went in. Southeast Toyota Dealers is a proud supporter of Bethune-Cookman basketball. Visit your local Toyota dealers or explore toyota.com today and take advantage of the deals on our full line of vehicles. And National Signing Day for football is quickly approaching, and head coach Raymond Woody Jr. and his staff have been hard at work recruiting the best talent in the nation. Come be a part of Bethune-Cookman football's live National Signing Day show on Wednesday, February 7th, as we announce a new breed of Wildcats. I will join Coach Woody live at youtube.com slash Network to recap an exciting offseason here at the beach. Full details will be announced next week, so stay tuned. The crew here at the Cata Network is hard at work to bring that show to you next Wednesday. And it, we, it's always college football season, Henson. You can run from it, but it's always football season. <laughs> it's always football season somewhere. You know, somebody has a practice or a signing day or a media day. Some five-star that got recruited to go to Florida State every darn day of the week. So it's amazing to see that is going to come up soon for our Wildcats. And the, one, and the ones on the hardwood have had a taunting effort, to say the least, to start this game out. Both teams shooting very well. Bethune-Cookman 56%, Jackson State 42%. And it is a 21-15 lead for the Cats with 11.40 to go in the first half. The Wildcats are three for three from beyond the arc. Ken Evans Jr. has the ball stripped by Hetty. Hetty keeps it in after getting the pass from Dyson. He backs up in the middle. DJ skips once and twice and scores off the window. More whistles 
And another stoppage of play. Oh, it's just for a substitution, my bad, as uh, Kiwan Johnson comes back on. No easy buckets as the shot clock doesn't start. There you go. Yes. And we have had a oh. couple of shot clock issues, and now the Hold. scoreboard is off completely. Whole board Whoa. is off. That's the wrong button, certainly. And we're going to take a little bit of a break while we figure this out. We can tell you about Nike, the official outfitter of the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats. Gear up on the newest PCU Nike gear at nike.com backslash Bethune-Cookman Wildcats. The scoreboard is now back, and we can get back underway. <laughs> Zeke Cook just walked over to the uh, Wildcats huddle and just stood there like he was a part of it looking at Coach Diaz. That reminds me of, of a funny moment from the 2010 FIFA World Cup where one of the players, I believe it was for Nigeria, went over and joined the huddle for the South Korean team and pretended to understand what the coach was saying. It was very funny. Ked Evans Jr. knifes and can't score, but it's an offensive rebound for the Tigers. Adams kicks it out, but Johnson travel with the basketball. Two Tigers hit the deck on that on that uh, did that offensive rebound, but ends up being a travel and a turnover of possession. 23-15 Wildcats, 10-50 to go in the first half. Harmon against Hunt draws some oohs and ahs from the crowd. Harmon, oh Zion, look at the spin, look at the move, he kicks it out. A three! Oh. oh! Battle for the loose ball, and it's going to be a foul that goes against DJ Carter Hollinger. Zion Harmon is in his bag early on in this one. Zion Harmon dribbled the ball for about 10 to 15 seconds, cut to the right side, spin move, didn't have enough room to get the layup off, and just heaves it across court to the wing for Deshaun Dyson, who was open. 23-15, Cookman. 5-0 run for the Cats, 10 minutes to go in the first half. Evans, double teamed out high, long pass to the open Johnson, extra pass to the top. Hunt takes a three, hits a three. Tough shot, almost was looking for the foul call. Ref, I guess, thought it was more of a simulated fall there. 23-18, Wildcats on top. Harmon is being face guarded by Kevion Hunt. And they tried to play the pick and roll and it's picked off. Young to Ken Evans Jr. wide open for three and he bricked it. Harmon tried to push it to Henny and it goes off the foot of Kiwan Johnson and will remain with Bethune Cookman. And I want to point out that Zion Harmon has more rebounds at the moment than Zeke Cook, who comes into this game the leading rebounder in all of the swag, and has a good couple inches on Zion Harmon. Zion well. Harmon only averages two rebounds per game. Heady 20 to shoot. Gets the screen from Halsey. And now we'll try again with Deshaun Dyson. One on one with Adams, and he is fouled. And I said in the women's game, I wish we had a fouled on stat because him and uh, Deshaun Dyson and Deshante Edwards get fouled almost every time they seem to shoot the basketball. Deshaun Dyson, this will be his 99th and 100th free throw of the season. He has shot the most free throws on this team by a long margin. And he's hit most of them, including those two. He shoots just under 70%. 25-18 Wildcats with 9-12 to go in the first half. Seneca Willoughby, the sophomore on the court now. And they're gonna get an illegal screen against Zeke Cook. Yeah, Zeke Cook didn't set his feet there. Tries to drop that screen in, get the space to help operate their offense, and it just 
too fast, too quick. A couple of offensive fouls for Jackson State in this first half. Nine minutes to go in it, 25 to 18. We understand there is no scoreboard on the stream. We apologize for that. That is why I am saying the time and score after every basket. Dyson works out of a double team. DJ wide open for three. Oh, he got it! DJ Carter Hollinger. Only his fifth three-pointer of the season. Timeout, Jackson State. 28-18, 840 in the first half. And the Wildcats are certainly showing out tonight. 10-point lead, 28-18. Four of five from deep for the Wildcats. Nike is the official outfitter of the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats. Gear up on the newest BCU Nike gear at nike.com backslash Bethune-Cookman Wildcats and make sure you are representing Bethune-Cookman University athletics to the fullest. Buy the latest BCU gear online at the Bethune-Cookman online store. Go to bcuathletics.com and click on shop to find the newest BCU clothing and apparel. That's bcuathletics.com and click on shop and visit your local Toyota dealers or explore toyota.com today. No matter your destination, Toyota goes with you. Toyota, let's go places. Hot start for the Cats. Here, Henson, 10-point lead early on. Yeah, this Wildcat offense is certainly going places. Zion Harmon being back has just lit a fire underneath this, this team. Jacoby Hetty has nine points, leading the team and the game. Eight points for Zion Harmon, four for Deshaun Dyson, who was a team leading and game lead, uh, game tie rather. Three assists. Reggie Ward has four rebounds and two steals and a block to start this game out. Only five turnovers for both teams. Only two fouls for both teams. And I'd argue that the refs have been very lenient on the whistles, compared, especially compared to that women's game we had earlier, where I think if you touch somebody, the ref would have called it. Yeah, hot start for the Wildcats, shooting 57.9% from the floor. Jackson State, 41.2%. Cat Evans Jr., 0 for 3 from the floor, a slow start for the second leading scorer in the SWAC right now. And defensively, right, the Wildcats are doing enough. But there are some easy looks underneath the basket and some easy kickouts for three that they're just not getting to those rotations. Yeah, you know, and hopefully when the game slows down and kind of settles more, they'll be looking to do that. It's been very wide open and end-to-end. -end. Both teams have turned the ball over five times. Skip pass to Young, he barely keeps it in play. And I bet you the people in the first row are thankful he did. Adams tried to throw it to Cook, and it comes off of the shoulder of DJ Carter Hollinger and will remain Jackson State ball. Seven to shoot for the Tigers, 8-16 to go first half. Evans, deep three. Oh, oh. wow. Ken Evans Jr., that was halfway to midcourt. Kind of, he caught it, dribbled like once, and just pulled it. Eight minutes to go, 28-21. Both teams hitting some threes. Wildcats have hit four, Tigers have hit two. That Tiger, three, excuse me, for the Tigers. Willoughby, Halsey thought about a mid-range jumper. Dyson with six to shoot. Gets the screen from Halsey. Dyson, step back, triple. Off the heel, no good. Tigers a chance to close the gap here. Ken Evans Jr. drives, kicks it out. Adams back to Ken. Pulls up again. This time it's too strong. And the seven-footer Halsey tips down the rebound. Hetty, transition triple. Too strong. Offensive board for DJ. Long zip. Halsey has it stripped by the shorter Chase Adams. Adams is only 5'8", goes behind the back to Ken Evans Jr., and he will get fouled by Seneca Willoughby. The Wildcats blowing a couple of opportunities there offensively. Yeah, Seneca Willoughby tried to do his best to guard that three-on-one situation, but just can't, you know, get in a, any type of position. It's the worst kind of play and position to be in as a defender. Does a decent job of at least stopping him from scoring the easy bucket and now sending him to the line. 
But yeah, missed opportunities and miscues after that, uh, what, second timeout for the Wildcats. We go to another media timeout. Stay up to date with everything Bethune Cookman Athletics by checking out the Wildcats on social media. Give BCU Athletics a like on Facebook and follow the Wildcats on Twitter and Instagram at BCU underscore athletics. For the latest on BCU basketball, follow at BCU Hoops on Twitter and Instagram. And after the Wildcats had a 10 point lead, the Tigers have closed in a little bit and Ken Evans Jr. will be going to the line to try and get his second and third points of the contest. And the, the, the only slightly worrying thing for me right now is that I don't think that the Wildcats can keep up that hot shooting that they started early on in the game. If they can, all the power to them, but they're gonna have to play a, a more grindy defensive game eventually against this Jackson State team, and they're gonna have to stop them from driving to the paint like Kenneth and Shooter's been able to do. Yes, you know, statistically, you're not gonna be able to keep these averages this high, and you're gonna have to start playing good defense, and to their credit, the Tigers are currently shooting only, uh, shooting 40% from the uh, field and three from eight from beyond the arc. So they're doing a decent job, but they could be doing much better. Wildcats have scoreless over the last 137. And Jackson State, as I mentioned, will go to the free throw line after Seneca Willoughby picked up his first foul. Willoughby, who is one of the couple of players that deputized for Zion Harmon in his absence, is currently on the floor with him, playing for Deshaun Dyson. And we get a first look at Damani McIntyre as well, the SWAC leader in steals. And he is currently number two in the nation in steals per game, Damani McIntyre. First one goes down for Evans. And he usually doesn't start either, so. Very, he does that off the bench, which yeah, is insane. Very impressive. Wildcats have two steals in the game already, one by Hetty, one by Henderson. Almost lost possession of it there on that inbound pass. Halsey dribbles to his left, then gets a kickball against Zeke Cook. Reminder, if you're just joining us, the Tigers down a couple of bodies today. Jamie Mitchell, Delisle Williams, Romel Mansell, and Deshaun Ruffin all not available as Halsey comes out. So a shorter lineup here for the Wildcats. Harmon, step back three. Oh, he is en fuego. He came back with a purpose. Zion Harmon is now four of four from beyond the arc in the beginning of this game. And he's got a game high 11 points. Zeke Cook, top of the key, has the ball stripped by Damani McIntyre, but the Tigers keep it. Oh. And then the ball is stripped again, this time by Seneca Willoughby. Ahead to Zion, he lays it in. Doesn't mess with that hand, just has a simple finger roll layup. Yeah, I thought for a second he was gonna go throw it down. 33-23, <laughs> Wildcats lead back to 10, six minutes to go in the first half. Adams against Willoughby, goes past him like he's not there and draws the foul. Nice move by Chase Adams, the senior from Chicago, the transfer from Salt Lake City Community College. And this is, this is his second year at Jackson State. Last year, eight points and 3.7 assists. Yeah. And one thing I want to point out is that every, every turnover for the Wildcats to start this game out has been a steal by the Jackson <laughs> State Tigers. Yeah. Six total steals. Six turnovers for the Wildcats and six for the Tigers as well. And it misses, says Chase Adams. Chase Adams started his collegiate career at Portland where he had 117 assists his freshman year. That's number two in school history for a freshman, only beaten by former NBA standout Darwin Cook who had 128 in his freshman year. Nice. And he missed both free throws. The nice company there. Adams usually a 77% free throw shooter on the season. Willoughby out to Yusuf Tamara, the Paris native, in the game for the first time. 
Willoughby, kick out. DJ drives, floater, no, just missed it short. Evans dribbles it off his foot. It's picked up by Timera. Yusuf runs the floor and is tied up huh? by Ken Evans Jr. And possession belongs to the Wildcats. That is a very impressive defense to somehow not draw a foul there on the tie up. And Yusuf Timera, he, he's a center. Yeah, he's not. Almost seven feet tall. He's not really used to dribbling the ball down the floor like that. Uh, kind of a little bit out of his element. Kind of slowed down, trying to figure out. He was look, kind of looking for somebody to help him and ends up by himself. Here's Tamara in his element, but he gets stripped of the ball, and it goes off his knee and out of bounds. Jackson State has possession. Nice job by Keontae Cornelius. We mentioned that Jackson State women's team is, is very tall. This Jackson State men's team, outside of a couple of players, pretty short. Kevion Hunt, 5'11", Chase Adams, 5'8", Keontae Cornelius, 5'10". Very interesting. You know, usually it's flipped. Uh, for... Evans lost the ball. Obvious. And it's picked up by McIntyre. Another steal for him. Zion, transition triple from straight on. He finally missed one. And Ken Evans takes the rebound. Evans in transition. Here's Cornelius spinning in the lane, kicking it out. And Evans will reset as they were four on five there. Evans against McIntyre, and McIntyre shuts him down with a block. This has been an extremely open game. Backdoor pass, it's a throw down for DJ. Dunks the ball so hard, he ends up almost, it goes into the crowd. 35-23, Bethune-Cookman, 4.15 to go first half. What a first half for the Cats. And they've got the more gym crowd buzzing on a Saturday afternoon. Cook battling with Tamara. Tamara gets around the screen. Adams escape dribble for Cornelius, and he hits the three. 35 26, 349 to go. Tough bucket there from Cornelius. Gets that open space, gets Zion a jump. Harmon. Mm. In his bag, hits the three! Oh my goodness! Timeout, Bethune Cookman, as Coach Theus wants to talk it over. That may be the three of the season as the Wildcat bench mobs Zion Harmon on his way to sit down. That's one of those shots where I think as a coach you have to go, well, he made it. Because I don't think that's what you draw up. You don't draw up a step back three heavily contested. I don't think Coach Theus draws up a lot of what Zion Harmon does. When you have a, a, a shot creator that can do what he does, sometimes you just got to let him play. It is 38-26 Wildcats with their largest lead of the night. Zion Harmon with 16 first half points with 3.33 to go. The spring season is nearly here, and VCU baseball and softball are ready to hit the field in the hunt for their first track championship. Spring schedules are available now at bcuathletics.com. Baseball ticket information will be posted soon, so stay tuned. And usually, hence it, it is about the Arctic in here, yeah. temperature-wise. It is hot tonight, and I'm not just talking about Zion Harmon's shooting no, performance. It, 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 he's doing it, uh, excellent. It's probably not helping. But it is certainly warm in more gymnasium. I think whoever probably put the air in just assumed it was going to be cold for the week. And then it's hitting a nice balmy 70 something degrees outside. It's in the really nice weather. We got a race down here in Daytona as well, yep, 24 I'm, hours. I'm going to go stop by the 24 hours after today and check it out as I usually do. It's a fun time down there at Daytona International Speedway. Only thing that is annoying about it is trying to go to sleep sometimes and all years <laughs> around the track at 2 a.m. Zion Harmon is six of eight and four of five from three. It, and wow. none, of the, none of the shots have been easy. I no. think that's the most impressive He had one aspect. easy layup off of a steal. No one, like none of the, outside of, you know, dunks and obvious stuff like that, most of the points the Wildcats have scored have been off of tough shots, tough threes, you know, tough uh, mid-range shots off of, you know, 
incredible dribble, dribble moves or tough passes. It's just everything about this team has been tough to start this first half. 38-26 Wildcats on top. 326 and counting in the first half. Jackson State looking for a response after Bethune Cookman has hit four of their last five shots. That's a missed three off the heel. Wildcats with a chance in transition. Willoughby to Zion. They left him open again. Oh, and he missed it. Only his second miss from three of the contest. He must want only to make the hard shots. That it's two, that one's too easy. Wide <laughs> open. Three minutes left. Same score. Adams drives, puts it up, and got it. The shortest kid on the floor. He's doing work. 38-28. 2.50 to go. Seneca Willoughby is being hounded by Chase Adams. He gets the ball to the corner with DJ Carter Hollinger. DJ lost it, scramble on the floor, tie up. Possession arrow Jackson State. There have been four jump balls in this first half. Yep. Both teams have done very well defensively. Seneca Willoughby comes out after picking up seven hard minutes in this first half. And these seven minutes, those seven minutes probably felt like 15. It's just been up and down and up and down. No one really had a set play in a minute. Cardio day at Moore Gym. 38-28, 2.35 to go first half. Jackson State runs a weave at the top. Adams through traffic. Cornelius from the corner. No good, but the long rebound comes down to Johnson. Adams drives again. Extra kick to Young. Got the three. And Jackson State has come alive from three-point land. They've hit two of their last three. Yeah, a well-worked possession to get that open look, not once, but twice. 38-31, two minutes to go in the half. DJ off a pass from Harmon, coughs it up. Adams to the corner. He tries a three. No good. Offensive board for Johnson. And one plus the foul. Late call, that was definitely a foul. But now all of a sudden, the Tigers are coming back and closing this gap back down to being possibly within four to end this half. 38-33 with a minute 49 to go in the half and a chance for a three-point play for Kiwan Johnson, the junior from Gulfport, Mississippi. First two college seasons for him at Coahoma Community College, which is a breeding ground for a lot of great talent that eventually makes its way to the SWAC. Seven zero run in just under two minutes for Jackson State as the Wildcats turn the ball over a couple of times and have finally started missing some shots. The M1 is converted by Johnson. Adams guards Zion Harmon all the way down the floor. 38-34, 139 to go. Hand off Jacoby Hetty, who's just checked back in. He's double teamed in the corner. Trying to work out of it. And he is jump balled. It's gonna be Wildcat ball on the fifth jump ball of the first half. Mo Williams asking why that wasn't a travel. Just a lot of grit out of both teams to start this game out. That's how you get all those jump balls is, you know, second chance opportunities, going for loose balls, steals, all that kind of stuff. Baseline in for the Wildcats. Dyson in the corner. Guarded by his opposite number, Cornelius. Dyson turns it over, looking for Petty underneath. And it's a blown layup by Colty Young. And all the way underneath is Jacoby. And he puts on a show. Had to clear that blown layup immediately leads to a dunk on the other side. Chase Adams had to clear the area for Jacoby Hetty. 434 with a minute, 40 to 34, excuse me, with a minute left. Adams against Reggie Ward. Young gets his defender in the air. Escape dribble three short. Offensive rebound to DJ. He lobs it up for Zion. Zion, the lob. Oh. And it's blocked. Put back is a foul as Reggie Ward got to it. Excellent defense. 
Uh, but if you're Zion Harmon, I'm, I don't understand why you don't you just go to the hoop and put that one up. And they I, tried for the spectacular. And I think that's what Coach Theus is telling his coaching staff, asking, did we plan that? Is that what we're supposed to do? And now he's going to get an earful, Zion is, from Coach Theus. And now I think the refs are reviewing if it was They a have foul. not put the technical foul on one. Jacoby Hetty, I believe. Nope, technical foul on Kawan Johnson. I'm not sure what for. I do not know what he did. He has been talkative to start this game out, as we've seen, but I don't know what he said or did to warrant that technical. The shooting foul is on Colty Young. I believe it's also a double technical against Jacoby Hetty as well, because it's not an uncontested free throw. As Ken Evans returns for Jackson State. But they got the one on Johnson. They got a foul. We're getting it across our kickers here. So no technical foul shots. So. Yeah. 41-34. As they didn't count the basket by Ward, he just went to the line for two and he made one of two. 26 seconds left in the first half. It was a double technical with Hetty and Johnson. Three good by Colty Young. 41-37 as the Jackson State Tigers have stormed back and are now down just four. Ten seconds to go in the half. They'll clear it out for Zion. He's already got 16. Five to shoot. He drives. He gives it to Ward who gets his shot blocked by Johnson. And that's the end of the first half. The Wildcats dominated for all but the last five minutes, and a massive Jackson State run has closed the gap to just four at the half. <laughs> Coach Theus is all the way on the other side of the floor demanding an explanation why that last play wasn't a foul. But I th it looked to me like a clean block from here. Yeah, it looked, it looked clean from up here, but I mean, he has a better view than we have and much much more basketball experience to be fair but a long time coming for these wildcats they had an excellent start at the beginning of this half it just kind of started dissipating as the as the quarter and the half went on as you said that last five minutes really just ended up in jackson state's favor you know and the thing was the the run that originally started wasn't because of you know excellent positioning it was mostly because of very tough shots being made consistently. It wasn't anything that I would, you would argue to build on as like your game plan for the rest of the game. The Wildcats led by 10 at 38 to 28 with three minutes and six seconds to go in the first half. And Jackson State went on an 11 to three run to close the half. And at the break, your score is Bethune-Cookman 41. Jackson State 37. We'll let you watch the dance team and enjoy halftime, and we'll take a break. When we come back, it's the Southeast Toyota Dealers halftime report right here on the Cattle Network. 41-37, Wildcats up at the half.
Welcome back to more gymnasium as we're about to get started for the second half here between the Bethune Cookman Wildcats and the Grand, uh, Jackson State Tigers. There are too many Tigers in this league. There's so, there's so many Tigers. Yeah, Jackson so State and Bethune Cookman. Bethune Cookman leads it 41 to 37 at the half. It's time for the Wildcat halftime report sponsored by Southeast Toyota Dealers. Here are your halftime scoring totals for the ball game for Jackson State. Johnson leads them with nine. Evans has seven. Young and Cornelius both have six. Adams has four. Hunt with three and Cook with two. And for Bethune Cookman, Harmon has a game high 16 on six of nine, shooting four of six from beyond the arc. Wildcats, the team shooting 51% and 54% from deep, but they've cooled off. They were shooting over 60% at one point. Hetty has 11. Carter Hollinger has seven. Dyson just four. And Reggie Ward has three. So the scoring coming from Har Harmon and Hetty and a little bit of Carter Hollinger, and that's about it. Got to get some of the others involved. Team stats look like this. Wildcats out rebounding the Tigers 20 to 14, 6 to 4 on the offensive glass with eight second chance points for the Wildcats and six for the Tigers. Assists 13 to 11 in favor of Bethune Cookman, but Wildcats have turned the ball over 11 times. Jackson State just eight. Blocks three to two in favor of Jackson State. Wildcats have scored 15 points on the fast break. They are getting out and running. And that is not to say that Jackson State isn't. It's just they've missed a couple of layups. They've missed a couple of easy chances in transition. The Wildcats have five steals. The Tigers have 10 steals. So 11, so 10 of the 11 turnovers for the Wildcats have been off of Jackson State steals. Low personal foul count, nobody even getting to the single bonus in the first half. And that was your first half recap, sponsored by Southeast Toyota Dealers. Visit your local Toyota dealers or explore toyota.com today. No matter your destination, Toyota goes with you. Toyota, let's go places. And let's go to the recap from around some of the women's basketball scores. Alabama A&M lost to Texas Southern 61 to 55. Florida A&M beat Alcorn State 60 to 56. Grambling State held off a hard charging Mississippi Valley State 81-71 after leading 53 to 28 at halftime. Big second half of Mississippi Valley State didn't get it done. Right here, Jackson State 81, Bethune Cookman 65. I do not have a final score from Arkansas, Pine Bluff, and Southern, but UAPB was up by 20 at the break against Southern as the SWAC women's basketball continues to be crazy. And there was some craziness in this first half, wasn't there, Henson? Yeah, there was a ton of craziness. Uh, score currently is 41-37. I know, I, you know, I just checked. ESPN and Google are giving you 56-44 in the second half. Which I don't is, know what that's from. They, I have no that's not idea. this game. Not at all. I think they took probably the women's game scores and just kind of like assumed something. But no, current score 41-37. We're only 35 seconds out from the second half. But uh, the the first half was just I, I I don't even have words for it. Just quick fast break transition basketball. No one doing a set play. Everyone was just kind of pulling the first open look they had, getting second chance opportunities here and there, but it wasn't very, it wasn't settled at all. And I wonder if the second half will be settled and who will that favor? Because I think the, the Tigers defense is doing a great job of slowing down the Wildcats uh, towards the tail end of that first half as we look to get back into action pretty soon here. Wildcats, or correction, Jackson State will have the ball first. We had five tie-ups in the first half. Wildcats lead this one 41-37. We're ready for the second half. It is currently an 11-3 Jackson State run to close the half. As they came out of the blocks firing after the Wildcats led by 10 with three minutes to go. They will get the ball first to the road blue, trimmed in red and white. Wildcats in the home gold with the maroon claw marks on the pants and white numbers. And if you're trying to get the live score on a, you know, a separate tab, just go to the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats website, look up Bethune-Cookman men's basketball, go to schedule, go to live stats. That'll sort you out. Don't trust ESPN right now. 
Currently, it's 41 to 37 here at Moore Gymnasium. Wildcats with the win. Ken Evans Jr. misses off to the, oh no, he didn't. That got a very generous kiss off the rim. Very tough basket. As James Henderson Jr. just kind of passed it back to Reggie Ward. Here is Ward, didn't see a lot of action in the first half, despite playing pretty well. Here's James Henderson Jr. off glass. 43-39, early on in the second, as Zion Harmon almost pokes it away from Adams. Tussle on the ground, it's a tie-up. Possession arrow, Wildcats, and a sixth tie-up in the game. This is, and this is the, what you get when you don't call a lot of fouls, especially earlier, and you don't kind of set the precedent that I'm going to call, you know, going to call those in uh, jump ball, loose ball fouls often. You only have six fouls for the Wildcats, four fouls for Jackson State. So everyone's playing kind of loose and fast. No one's in any real foul trouble. The only player in the game with two fouls is Seneca Willoughby. And he only played, what, seven minutes? Yep. And he currently isn't even on the floor as they mop up. And it is hot for everyone in Moore Gymnasium. If you see people fanning themselves, it is warm in Moore. And that is usually not the case. It's usually pretty cold in here. Yeah. Plenty of people brought jackets and are not using them. Us included. Yep. <laughs> Harmon to inbound. A bit of full court press here from Jackson State. Dion got to get it in. He does to Jacoby Hetty. And then Reggie Ward will bring the ball up as Jackson State drops back. Ward almost threw it away, got it back. Floater in the lane is good. And Reggie Ward only uh, is up to five points on the night. With how much he played in the first half, you thought maybe he'd have more. Yep. Kind of ends up being a pass back to himself as Hetty uh, gets the ball knocked away from him and then restarts possession there. 45-39, 18-37 to go first half. Wildcats try to trap outside as Adams falls over. Kenevins Jr. shoots a three in the confusion and hits it. And Coach Mo Williams calls, I believe, calls timeout. And he's still walking around checking moisture on the floor in front of his bench and wants him to come mop it up again. And then the We're just waiting. Yeah, then the confusion. Well, now the person's walking over, but they look to be trying to inbound the ball. It's 45-42 Wildcats. Jackson State within three. The Wildcats has, have led by as many as 12. That was 38-26 with 3.06 to go in the first. It has been all Jackson State since then. As we still wait for them to finish mopping up the floor in front of the Jackson State bench where the tie-up happened a couple moments ago. And that's one thing about it. Once it gets warm, you know, it gets warm in here, a lot more moisture is going to be around. It's going to be harder to mop the floor up. Deshaun Dyson, only four points in the first half for him. He averages 14.6 points a game. Trying to get him going to the second half is going to be important. Harmon, tough handoff all the way near the midcourt line. Ward picks up his dribble, gets it back from Henderson, and gets it through contact. And then a steal by Deshaun, uh, De Jacoby Hetty, and he punishes. Now, Hetty's got to be careful because he's already got a technical as well as Kiwan Johnson for Jackson State, who is not on the floor right now. You've got to be careful doing any sort of taunting after the play. Quick su succession there, Reggie Ward, and then Hetty. So now all of a sudden it's a seven point lead. 49, 42, 736 in the second half. 1736, excuse me, in the second half. Ken Evans Jr. has a lane, kicks to the corner. Three is good by Colty Young. He's a 28.6% free throw shooter, and he takes a lot of them. And he knocked that one down. Jackson State has now hit more threes than Bethune Cookman, seven of 16 for the Tigers, 6 of 11 for the Wildcats. It's 49-45 underneath. Hetty blocked. Ooh. A vicious rejection by Trayvon Johnson. And then Johnson on the other end scoops and misses. 
Petty slow to get up. And the Wildcats in transition. Zion to the hoop. No good. Put back Ward also no. Johnson with the board. Uh-oh, it's a track meet time again. Adams steps into a three. Short. And I think Hetty fell awkwardly there. As he yeah, Hetty, Hetty is a little bit gimpy on the far side. We saw a couple of injuries in the women's game for the Wildcats. Don't want a repeat of that here, especially to their top scorer. Because if he was feeling a bit faster off the jump. Dyson, he... step back, front iron, no good, but a foul called underneath as James Henderson Jr. hit the deck. And we'll see if Jacoby Hetty comes out of the game. Looks like he's gonna tough it out for now as Chase Adams leaves for Jackson State. He's replaced by Kevion Hunt. Yeah, but as I was trying to, you know, say before the possession got real interesting, hey, you know, if Hetty was, wasn't feeling so gimp, he would have been, you know, open and basically in a cherry picking situation after that. Ooh. Hunt knocks that one out of play as they tried to get the ball to James Henderson Jr. Kevion Hunt, just 5'11". The sophomore from Jackson, Mississippi, playing for his hometown school. Zion telling James Henderson Jr., just stand there. You're way taller than him. They do get the ball in. Zion driving up and under. Oh, plus the foul. It's the Zion Harmon show at Moore Gym. Up and under. Amazing, amazing layup there. 51-45 with a chance for a three-point play for Zion Harmon. He is up to 18 points, and that one, I can't say it's the most impressive because the step-back fadeaway three in the first half probably isn't going to be beat in this game. Uh, Zion, the best free-throw shooter on this team and one of the best in the conference at 92%. He knocks that one down, 52-45, 16 minutes left to go in the ballgame. Jackson State is not going to go away. They've come alive. Now shooting 45% from the field and 44 from three. Young, another three. Too strong. And the Wildcats grab the rebound. Hetty in transition makes the defender look silly, and he'll go to the line as he gets contact against Colton Young, who protests his innocence. Leans up against the wall. <laughs> Confused at that foul call. And Didn't get his feet set. And we go to the first media timeout of half number two. Stay up to date with everything Bethune-Cookman Athletics by checking out the Wildcats on social media. Give BCU Athletics a like on Facebook and follow the Wildcats on Twitter and Instagram at BCU underscore athletics. For the latest on BCU basketball, follow at BCU Hoops on Twitter and Instagram. And visit your local Toyota dealers today. Toyota. Let's go places. Zion up to 19. He's been balling out, but he's got to bring the rest of the team with him. Yeah, I mean, Zion has been a one-man army, so to speak. But obviously, you want the rest of your team to start helping you out with this, you know, offensively. Deshaun Dyson isn't, you know, playing like his normal self. One for four, 0 for two from beyond the arc. Reggie Ward's been playing, you know, up to standard, up to par. And Hetty's done well, but Dyson, usually the third head of this offensive uh, Wildcats team, just isn't there right now. But obviously, it, you know, it's not hurting them too much currently, but you obviously wanted to start playing a little bit better as the Tigers have a much more even spreading, uh, even point scoring, rather. I'm so. trying to find this score between UAPB and Southern. I have not been having much success, so. Yeah. All we know is UAPB led by 20 at the half. Right here, it's 52-45, Bethune-Cookman over Jackson State. Jackson State and I, had an 11-3-1 to close the half and then started the second quarter strongly, but the Wildcats have scored 11 points in the half to Jackson State's eight. We are still, of course, early on in this one with 15.56 to go in the half, and Jacoby Hetty going to the line. Not a lot of trips to the line for either team. Just five shots for the Wildcats and seven for Jackson State. Yeah, and I, I'm assuming, as you were trying to find the score early, I'm assuming they might have be having the same trouble and problems as we are having with ESPN kind of 
yelling out the wrong score and confusing the Wildcats and Tigers fans at home and general SWAC audience. Both free throw, oh no, I spoke too soon, he missed the second one. It looked good off the hands. Hit the, hit the back of the rim almost as if to say, no, it's not going in. 53-45, heady up to 14. Here is Kevion Hunt, and now Zeke Cook, who leads the SWAC in rebounding. Ken Evans Jr., elbow jumper, too strong. Tapped out, Jackson State trying to keep it alive, and Dyson says, I'll have that. Long pass ahead. Zion, bullet, under the basket. Two hand, j -j -j jam by Jacoby. Transition offense at its finest. 55-45, Wildcats back up by 10. Take advantage of the man advantage you have. Open space. Evans, Easy jump dunk. pass, nice closeout by Hetty to deny the three from Kevion Hunt. And then Hetty falls down and Hunt hits the one foot runner. Dyson, he takes an escape dribble and rolls down a jumper from the baseline. Once again, I don't think Coach Thea sometimes draws up these plays for some of these players that they manage to do because escape dribble fade away with like 28 seconds on the shot clock is not the first move. 57-47, 14.35 to go in the second half. Wildcats on top. Couple of weave at the top of the key. They pick and roll for Johnson, and he is fouled. They'll get James Henderson for that foul. As you mentioned, nobody with more than two, and that's Henderson's first. Seneca Willoughby has two fouls, and he only played seven minutes. For Jackson State, Colty Young has two, and Travion Johnson has two. And Johnson is currently at the free throw line. And he missed the first one long. Johnson, the transfer from Southern Arkansas Tech, a 61% free throw shooter. Originally from Chicago. And he led the Southern Arkansas Tech Rockets in rebounding both seasons. He was there, but he missed both free throws that trip to the line. Yeah, it's hard to, you know, take those free throws in more gymnasium. The entire crowd is going to let you know that they don't want you here on making those shots. Harmon against Hunt shows off the dribbles, throws it off a defender. It caroms to the top of the key. Jackson State takes it away through Cornelius, and then another scramble. James Henderson gets on the ground. It's a lob to Jacoby, and he puts it in. Oh, behind the back for Kevion Hunt, and a foul is called against Jacoby Hetty. He protests his innocence. That'll be the second foul on BCU, and the second on Hetty. And shout out to James Henderson Jr. Oh, he, he kept that much, play alive. Much too big to be moving as fast and as much as he was on that possession. Diving for two loose balls in the same, like, 10 second, 10 second time space. And there is uh, cleanup going on all over the court for moisture because that was a crazy last 30 seconds. Yeah, every, every, every hand with the Wildcat shirt is holding a towel and trying to dry off something right now. 59-47, Bethune-Cookman, 13-53 to go in the second half after the foul against... Actually, they get Zion with the foul instead of Jacoby. That's his first. Honestly, I think in the grand scheme of things, that's okay. Yeah. You always want your player with, you know, if you don't have any fouls or a guy doesn't have any fouls, you prefer him to get that foul over someone who already does. Very, very simple. Zion, who has missed the past four games with a hand injury, has played the most minutes tonight 24 for Harmon they lob it up it's a clash of bodies on the baseline and James Henderson Jr. comes away with it no look pass to Reggie Ward he's fouled and he scores Reggie. you looked at me with a, like a confused expression like how did he do that Reggie Ward is hilarious he's got him and Deshante Edwards are cut from that same cloth of I don't care if there's an iron door a brick wall you know, a, a dang Goliath in the paint. I'm a drive regardless. He had the ball in his chest yeah. when he got fouled and somehow got it up. 
Wildcats get the and one. 34 points in the paint for Bethune Cookman tonight. And I do have to mention, I did not hear that he was not playing pregame. Oh, Hunt falls over again. Flipped on the floor. Ken Evans takes the ball into the low post. Cornelius at three, no good. But um, Jordan O'Neill, their team leader in field goal percentage and their second leading scorer has not played tonight. I did not uh, get hear that he was injured before the game. Dyson off glass, and that actually was deflected by Kiwan Johnson before it got there, and it still went in. Are they going to call a tech on Dyson there? Or a warning, possibly? I, I think a warning yeah. on Coach Theus or Dyson. Because Dyson walks by and hit the ball <laughs> on the way yeah, back. Yeah, that we, we had a couple of players, I remember in the Southern game, either uh, warned because of that, because the game, the pace of play is so high, they don't want anything disrupting a team from getting the ball and running, yeah. which both teams have wanted to do off of inbound set plays. Current score is 64-47, BCU in BCU's favor, 13 Thir minutes. 13 minutes to go, thank you, Hanson. Hunt, stop and go. Wide open, oh, oh look cool. out! Zeke Cook lost the ball, it fortuitously came off the glass, came straight to Evans, who missed the layup. Dyson, driving. Through contact, no good. Harmon for the rebound. You, you, uh, I'm sorry, Zion Harmon is shooting up threes again. You said earlier something about Zion Harmon having a bunch of rebounds today. That's only his second. Well, at the mo it was one rebound and Z Cook had zero. I oh, took okay. Advantage. Ken Evans Jr. for three. No, you, you gotta have context to those stats, Henson. Yeah. Well, currently he is tied with two rebounds with the leading rebounder in the swag. So two rebounds for both. That's two empty possessions for both the Wildcats and the... Harmon, tough finish. Over two blue jerseys on the baseline and he smiles all the way down the floor. 66-47 Wildcats, 11.56 to go. A circus shot from Zion Harmon. An 11-0 run over the last three minutes for Bethune Cookman. Cook trying to end it. No, bricked it. Off the back iron, nobody there for the rebound in blue and white. Ward dribbles it up. And a foul underneath. I think will go against Kiwan Johnson, and it will. And remember, Johnson has a technical already, as does Jacoby Hetty, as we hit the media timeout. All Wildcats in the last three minutes. An 11-0 run, 66-47 BCU right here on the Cat Eye Network. The spring season is here and BCU baseball and softball are ready to hit the field in the hunt for their first SWAC championship. Spring schedules are available now at bcuathletics.com. Baseball ticket information will be posted soon, so stay tuned and don't miss the remaining second of Wildcat basketball this season. Get your tickets to see Bethune-Cookman basketball live at Moore Gymnasium. Starting at just $15, get your tickets today at the BCU box office or online at Ticketmaster.com. It's been an 11-0 run for the Wildcats over the past three minutes, Henson. How have they got that done? Well, I mean, these fast break and transition opportunities, we've seen these odd man rushes, so to speak. It's almost like we're watching hockey live. Uh, oh my goodness, 27 fast break points for the Wildcats, only four for the Tigers. Just an absurd amount of fast break opportunities, transition opportunities for the Wildcats. It's almost like we're watching hockey with all the odd band rushes and breakaway, uh, breakaway chances. But Jackson State has allowed the Wildcats to do that by continuing to play this up-tempo style, right? They could have easily slowed it down and tried to play the half-court set and play a bit of press coverage on the inbounds passes and take that run and gun style away from the Wildcats, but they haven't. They've just played into it and they've missed their last um, four or five shots and then the Wildcats are able to take advantage of it. Yeah, that's the last thing you want to do. If you're, you know, if you're a Tigers fan, you want to see this team slow down because you're not making your shots right now. Now, if they were making their shots, it'd be a different story, but obviously you're playing fast and loose with a team who also wants to play fast and loose. And when one of those teams is on a cold streak, it makes it much easier for that team to pull away. Zion Harmon up to 21 points. Remember, he's missed the last couple of games with a hand injury and making a massive return tonight. 
Wildcats are ready to go. We're just waiting on Jackson State and head coach Mo Williams to get out of the huddle. Harmon has had some really impressive games this year, especially early on. 33 points against UIW is his season high, but he's also had 29 against Charleston Southern and 18 in a win against South Carolina State and then 20 and 21 against the two Trinities really early on in the season. So Zion Harmon show has been frequent at Moore Gym this season. It's been a reoccurring show. We've got, it's kind of like Cats on Broadway. We can't get rid of it. And, I mean, other than injury, we've seen him offensively, you know, be dominant here in Moore Gym. 66-47, Wildcats on top with 11.30 to go. Reggie Ward, under two defenders, gets the roll! That's that Moore Gym bounce off the rim right there. 68-47, Wildcats on top. Harmon goes for the steal, doesn't get it. Johnson. Adams throws it back to Johnson off a foot underneath, and it's still Jackson State ball. It hit Ward. And now I think the, the Tigers are kind of slowing down the possession, tried to run a set play. Didn't work, but... They've tried to go to that pick-and-roll-esque play a couple of times. Johnson only... I mean, he has nine points, so it's worked a little bit. And then... Jackson State throws the ball away and timeout Jackson. Yep. He slipped when he caught the ball a little bit. And I think that's what really made Coach Mo Williams want that timeout even more. Both teams have turned the ball over 12 times. Jackson State has 11 steals. Bethune Cookman, nine. Kimani McIntyre has played five minutes. He's only credited for one steal. I, in my memory, he probably should have had two. But we'll see if he plays any more factor in, in this second half. It, it's been really top-heavy, the minutes for this Wildcats team. Harmon, 27. Hetty, 24. Dyson, also 24. Ward, 19. Henderson and Carter Hollinger, 13. And then Halsey, 9. Willoughby, 7. McIntyre, 5. And Tamara, 3. That's been the minutes distribution for the Wildcats tonight. And I think the air just cut on <laughs> as more Jim gets excited. Because it's been quite it's been a quite warm afternoon, and that's definitely not helping any players' irritableness. Yeah. I remember there was one game last year where we almost had to go over to Emory Riddle University to play some games because the uh, air conditioning wasn't working. But they they got it fixed. And I'm not sure what the stoppage is for. If the stoppage is for the air conditioning, which I now feel it is on, thank goodness. Only one Hail Wildcats. <laughs> Only one. <laughs> that was for the air. So we are still in a break, and I'm not sure what the stoppage is. I'll ask the table, but in the meantime, let's talk about baseball, because baseball season is coming up. We had uh, Coach Hernandez on for our halftime interview last week here on the Cat Eye Network. He's super excited. They had their first scrimmage last night of the spring season. And if you're in the area, you got to get yourself down on the 16th of February and all season long to Jackie Robinson Ballpark as they'll start against Spring Hill College. They'll host Northwestern out of the Big Ten and a couple other high-profile teams and, of course, SWAC play. But we need you to be loud down there yeah. at Jackie Robinson Ballpark this season. Jackie Robinson Ballpark is an amazing place to watch a baseball game. I'd say it's the PNC Park of the South. I'll say that, don't you know? But a very enjoyable experience, you know, down there. Nice breeze, very spacious seating, you know, good, um, good concessions. Yeah. Everything you want at a ball game. And a lot of games early in the season because the Wildcats share that venue with Jackson State. So we, we do have confirmation the delay is for the air conditioning to cool the place down a bit. The referees stopped play because it was too hot in here. They wanted the air conditioning turned back on. That, that, I have been broadcasting games for a long time. 
That is a new one on me. Yeah, I've, and I've seen a rain delay inside at a basketball game. <laughs> and still, an air conditioning break is a new one for me. Air conditioning break is hilarious. I'm not going to lie to you. And hopefully that'll give ESPN time to realize that the game is not whatever the score is they have right now. Well, currently the score is 68-47. Bethune-Cookman on top with 11.15 to go. The Wildcats yep. have outscored the Tigers 27 to 10 in the second half while shooting 70% from the floor and they don't have a three in the second half. They've completely changed their game plan. They've gone to the paint. They've gone to transition offense and it's worked out. Yeah, I mean, they, they're shooting well from beyond the arc. That's the funniest aspect. We've seen them in games where they haven't been shooting super well. Keep shooting threes and keep shooting. They're hitting, they're around 50% from the uh, beyond the arc right now. Actually dead on 50, six of 12. But they've slowed down play a little bit. They've, you know, extra pass into the paint, driving a little bit more, more transition plays inside the arc. Nice inbounds play, but the rim is not kind to Colty Young. And Hetty grabs the rebound. 11 minutes left. Wildcats up big, 68-47. In a shocking turn of events, Zion is not fouled as he split a double team. Transition triple, too strong for Colty Young. Offensive board for the smallest player on the floor, Chase Adams. And one thing about this game, they, the refs have been extremely lenient for both teams. It, it's not a, no one's getting calls. Johnson, step back, no good. And the other Johnson tips it in and one as he got caught on the wrist on the second putback. Trayon Johnson. There is a bevy of Chicago talent in the game. Johnson, of course, from Chicago. And for the Wildcats, we have Jacoby Hetty. Deshaun Dyson, Reggie Ward. And one goes for Johnson. That's his first made free throw of the game. Sixty-eight to fifty. Eighteen points the gap, ten thirty to go. And I, I don't even want to say the Wildcats are home drive. No. Because we saw the run that Jackson State put on at the end of the first half to close the gap to four. And we also saw the run that the Wildcats put on Southern when we thought the game was over. Yeah. Harmon, overhand pass. Dyson, open underneath. He puts it up. No good. And the long rebound comes down to Johnson. Evans lobs it up for the jam by Colty Young. I really Wildcats getting a bit of their own medicine there, 68-52. Wildcats break the press. Hetty is fouled on a reach-in. Ked Evans Jr. wanted a traveling violation, but they get Kevion Hunt for the foul. Hetty yelling, trying to get through the double team. Quick 5-0 run for Jackson State. They've closed the gap to 68-52 with 9.55 to go. That's three, uh, three fouls for uh, Young. Reggie Ward will run the offense. Against Ken Evans Jr. Twirls the screen, gets two defenders out of the play, goes downhill and the layup is too strong. And then James Henderson Jr. is gonna foul Zeke Cook on the back end. Nice set play for Bethune Cookman. Just Ward couldn't finish it off. And then James Henderson Jr. is a little bit unlucky with that call. Don't think he even meant to make contact there. He just kind of bumps into him. Both go down. We're going to see Elijah Halse back in the game. Halse nursing a ankle injury. Usually a starter on this team, the seven-foot sophomore from Orlando. I was told by assistant coach Adam Top that he would try to go tonight. And he has gone for a total of nine minutes and now probably more with Henderson having four fouls. 
Adams needs to get it to Ken Evans Jr. Who leads Jackson State with 12 points. He goes around Halse, and he's fouled by Halse. And that'll put Jackson State in the bonus for the first time today. Someone is in the bonus. This will be a one and one. We went through the whole first half with no bonuses, and now the game started to tighten up a little bit. Oh, excuse me, there was uh, one more foul to get into the one and one. The referee did signal for it, but it's just an inbounds play. Handoff for a slam. As Trayon Johnson was lurking in the dunker spot. And they're gonna get a delay of game against Bethune Cookman against Elijah Halsway for throwing the ball away. 7-0 run for Jackson State. And they turn it over. Zeke Cook out to Colty Young. Missed a three, put back, no good. Scramble underneath the basket. Another putback is blocked. A fourth opportunity is muscled in for Jackson State. 9-0 run. And that's a foul on Young there. As he tried to go at Harmony up, but that will send the Wildcats to the line for a one and one. But it is all Jackson State right now with nine minutes to play, just like it was at the end of the first half. The Wildcats have gone away after an 11-0 run to put them up by 21 points. And that was just less than two minutes ago. It's now 56-68, Jackson State. Harmon at the line. It's a one and one. And he got the front end. Now that's four fouls for Young. He's a big piece of their offense. Couple other big pieces hurt. Jamie Mitchell, their three-point specialist. Jordan O'Neill, not listed as hurt, but has not played today. Their starting center. And Romel Mansell, the team leader in blocks last year, also not playing for Jackson State tonight. Ken Evans Jr., nice defense by Halse. Wild rebound comes back to Evans, and it's an and one. And Jackson State is loving life on the bench, even down by now just 12. As Yusuf Tamara is gonna come in to replace Elijah Halse as he picks up his second foul. 11-2 run for Jackson State. And you could say this run started from the foul trouble down low. James Henderson Jr. gets in foul trouble and then Halse comes out and gets a couple fouls on him. 70-59, Wildcats lead with 8.45 to go. Gotta get some offense here. Dyson to the rack, another layup is too strong. Another rebound by Johnson. Tamara grabs the loose ball. Ward, that's blocked by Johnson and it's Jackson State ball. Wow. And more gymnasium is not happy with the lack of a call there. Reggie Ward comes out. DJ Carter Hollinger goes in. DJ has seven points on three of five shooting. He's been pretty good tonight, as well as five rebounds. But Reggie Ward leads the team with 11 rebounds. And the entire game. There's a three for Kenevins Jr. Missed everything. And more Jim's letting him hear about it. Wildcats still have 8.23 to play, up 70-59. Harmon, long pass. Jacoby Hetty in the front court. I think the Wildcats are gonna try and run some set yeah. plays, take some time off the clock. Slow it down. You have no reason to be playing this fast at this point. You've been up a lot. Harmon has 23 points. Didn't get to 26 that time with a long contested three. Evans slides it across to Young. Evans goes left, into a double team, fading away, blocked by Jacoby Hetty. Hetty into the front court. He goes all the way, and he missed the layup again. Adams for Jackson State, lays it off to Cook, gets it back, step back, doesn't take the three in the corner, 
And Jackson State will set up for Colty Young to drive baseline and get a blocking foul called against Yusuf Tamara. Wildcat bench up in arms as we have the under eight media timeout. Jackson State will shoot to get it under 10 when we come back. Come be a part of BCU Athletics and support the Cat Eye Network. If you or your business is interested in partnering with us here on the Cat Eye Network, you can reach out to the Wildcats Athletic Communications Department at BCU Sports Info at Cookman.edu. That's BCU Sports Info at Cookman.edu. Man, the, the Wildcats have gone away just like they did at the end of the first half. They had a 21 point lead. It's now down to 12. The only points the Wildcats have gotten the last four minutes are two Zion Harmon free throws. Well, <clears throat> basketball is a game of runs. And the Wildcats were on one, you know, and that, that timeout, that, that um, media timeout just kind of took the wind out of the sails of the Wildcats and then foul trouble for both James Henderson Jr. and then Jose came in, got fouled a couple times, some turnovers, and then some missed opportunities. At least if they were down by, if they were, you know, the run happened, but it happened slower, there's one aspect of it is that the Wildcats have played into this run happening. They've played fast and loose like they've been playing the whole game. And when you play fast like that and you don't score, especially on layups, it, it gives the opposing team a chance to make these comebacks because they're getting more possessions. Both teams have had 64 possessions in the game. That's a lot, even for a full-time score, and we still have seven and a half minutes left. Wild Cup's up 70 to 59. Harmon has 23, Hetty has 18. On the Jackson State side, Ken Evans has 15. Colty Young has 14. Those are the only, Reggie Ward Jr. for the Wildcats has 12, but he's on the bench right now with, he doesn't have any fouls, he's just on the bench right now. Those are your double digit scores. Colty Young makes it a 10 point game, 70 to 60. And this is turning out to be potentially a mirror image of the Southern game where the Wildcats were down big, came back, forced overtime, and won it at OT. And if anybody knows about coming back, coming back from big deficits, it's Coach Mo Williams. This Jackson State team has a big scalp this year. They beat Missouri at Missouri. Wildcat ball, at last touched by Johnson. So they know what it means, means to have big wins. They beat them 73-72. They had a really tough out-of-conference schedule. Didn't play a home game until the 6th of January when they started conference play against Alcorn State. Harmon doubled on the baseline, and they're going to get a foul called and send Zion to the line for a one-on-one. -on -one. They're going to get Adams for it. That's his second foul. And what's funny about this game that we, you know, the refs weren't, haven't been really, hadn't really called much. And he misses the front end of a one and one. In that first half, and now we're getting to this nitty gritty and we're seeing a lot more calls. Nine point game, 70-61. Wildcats on top, 7.05 to go. Ken Evans on the baseline, traveled. 14th turnover for Jackson State. Wildcats have 13. Oh no, Wildcats have 14. 13 fouls for the Tigers 12. Tigers play some full court press. They break it. Deshaun Dyson will slow it down. Double team down high, gets it up to Carter Hollinger. Here's Damani McIntyre in the game. Hasn't seen play since early on in the first half. Tamara to McIntyre. Harmon up and under. Got his shot altered by Johnson. And then Jackson State almost throws the ball away. Young finds it in between his feet. 6.30 to go. Cats up by 9, 70, 61. Adams fouled. No shot, but it'll be a one and one. And this is about to become a free throw shooting contest, Henson. 
yeah. they are very close in terms of free throw shooting numbers for the game. 72% for Bethune Cookman, 69% for Jackson State. Yeah, so obviously it's the kind of game, if it becomes a free throw shooting contest, it always kind of favors the home team. You know, you have the crowd in it and all that kind of stuff, even though they got quiet, oddly, before these free throws. Hook. A couple of fans have left more gymnasium early when the Wildcats were up by 21 as Holty, or Juby Adams misses the front end of a one-on-one -on -one just like Zion did. Yep. Oh, it's picked off by Adams. They tried to skip it to Dyson. A 15th Wildcat turnover and a 14th Jackson State steal. Six minutes left. Adams drives against Ward. Looking for somewhere to go with the basketball backs all the way out. Drives again, mid-range shot. Misses everything. And then a one and one as it's a foul. They'll send Johnson to the line. It was called against Damani McIntyre. Seneca Willoughby comes in, replacing Deshaun Dyson, and Jacoby Hetty's gonna check back in. As well as Kevion Hunt for Jackson State, as this game has tightened up down the stretch. Nine points, the gap, 70 to 61, with 5.54 left. The Wildcats have not scored in the last two minutes and 58 seconds. And their only points in the last five minutes were two Zion Harmon free throws. Missing the front end of a one and one was Johnson. Wildcats have gotten lucky at the line. And then another steal, this time by Hunt. In the corner, Adams for three, short. Offensive tip in, no good. Willoughby loses the handle on the rebound. It's a jump ball, and it will be Jackson State ball off the alternating possession. The Wildcats continue to implode here in the fourth quarter, essentially. And that's, you know, you can't turn the ball over this much at the tail end of a game. I don't, you know, even if it, it, it's, it's not helping, essentially, the Wildcat offense at all towards the tail end here. Though credit to Jackson State's defense, the Jackson State Tigers have done a great job of creating these turnovers off this full court press set. But they haven't really taken advantage of all the stuff they've created towards the this latter two, three minutes of scorelessness from the Wildcats offense. Cook off balance, doesn't go. He gets the rebound and is fouled. The foul's gonna go on Carter Hollinger, and that's gonna be a one and one, not in the act of shooting for Jackson State. Seventy sixty one. This score is held for a minute here. Wildcats shooting forty eight percent from the field in the second half as they've missed the front end of a one and one for the third straight time. And that is the only reason the Wildcats really still have this lead. They just can't hit their free throws in this clutch situation. Wildcats with some secondary members on the floor and that's a foul finally as they're gonna call it against Kiwan Johnson and send DJ Carter Hollinger to the line. But the back end of my stat where the Wildcats are 48% from the floor in the second half, they only have 25 shot attempts. As the first one is missed, as a, it's a missed free throw party here at Moore. Uh, Lives on both, uh, both yeah. rings. Jackson State has 30 shot attempts in the second half to Bethune-Cookman's 25. Wildcats, 16 turnovers on 15 steals. And finally, the Wildcats are on to 71 points, back to a 10-point gap, 5.05 to play. Howell was looking, it would have looked like they would have broke their average, but 
Wildcats likely to get to their season average of 74 points. Adams fading away off the window. Another offensive board for Jackson State. It goes out of bounds, and Jackson State has the ball. Last touch by Seneca Willoughby. We go back to the Toyota keys to the game, Henson. Battle on the glass. Jackson State is dominating. 15 offensive rebounds. Yep. And it's funny is that at when the you know Wildcat run was happening, it was much in favor of the Wildcats in that regard. And slowly but surely, the Tigers have kept going and punching away at this offensive glass. Pettivins Jr. to Johnson in the dunker spot, and he finishes. 71-63, 4.37 to go. Wildcats is trying to drain some sand through the hourglass. Long pass ahead by Willoughby. DJ gets it into the front court. And now Zion Harmon can go to work against Adams. Holty Young is in the ball game with four fouls. Watch number four in blue. Harmon, extra pass. DJ for the dunk. And Back that, to a 10 point game. And that's how you re energize a crowd. Adams quickly into the front court. Four minutes to go. Young for three. Good. A ninth three pointer of the game for Jackson State. Colty Young is four of 11 from downtown. Oh, no, three of eight from downtown, four of 11 overall. 73 66, 348 to go. Zion with Young all over him. And a layup missed by James Henderson Jr. Great defense from the Tiger there. Young for three again. Off the window, offensive rebound, Zeke Cook blocked, or at least an altered shot by James Henderson. Remember, Henderson playing with four fouls, as is Colty Young. 3.22 to go. Willoughby into the paint. Got scared, terrified <laughs> of Johnson down low. Goes back to the top, and they'll drain time. Off the clock, Hetty double team. Henderson is open, skip to the corner. DJ, he hits it! It's a two-point basket. His toe is on the line. It's still a massive bucket for DJ Carter Hollinger. 73-66, we go to the final media timeout with three minutes and three seconds remaining. The Wildcats were just one of their last 10 before that bucket. Sets his feet, takes his time, doesn't rush the shot. You know, had all that space that he was given, and the, the Tigers are obviously cool with letting him take that shot, and he makes it, makes him pay. Does a great job. Come be a part of BCU Athletics and support the Cat Eye Network. If you or your business is interested in partnering with us here on the Cat Eye Network, you can reach out to the Wildcats Athletic Communications Department at BCU Sports Info at Cookman.edu. That's BCU Sports Info at Cookman.edu. I, I, I want to turn your attention to a couple of stats here. Offensive rebounds, Jackson State leads that category 17 to nine. And second chance points lead, Jackson State leads at 16 to 11. Yeah. They have feasted on second chance opportunities and that's how they've made this comeback. They were at one point down 21 points. The Wildcats were on an 11 to 0 run with 10 minutes to go in the game. We thought it might have been over, but Jackson State has battled back. They've done a great job to stay in this game, keeping their heads up and not seeing the score on the, you know, score on the scoreboard and letting it get out of hand. And in fact, you know, being in this game down late, they're only three threes away, you know? And that's the you know, plaudits to the coaching staff of the Tigers to, you know, keep have players keep their heads on, especially when you have someone like Young, who's had four fouls for I think the entire second half. There is no BC without you. Show your support for Bethune-Cookman Athletics by joining the Wildcat Champions Club today. Thank you. And help us build a championship culture at Bethune-Cookman. You can donate and join at cookman.scalefunder.com. That's cookman.scalefunder.com. And thank you to all 500 of you joining us on the Cat Eye Network. We appreciate your patronage, whether you're a fan of Jackson State, Bethune-Cookman, or the larger college basketball audience from around the country. And the refs just looked at the review. They were yelling at our replay booth behind us that they wanted to check that three-point, that DJ Carl, uh, DJ shot. It was a two-pointer. It looked from here like his toe was on the line. Yeah. But anyway, 
It's a nine point lead, 75 to 66 with 3.03 to go. Wildcats have three timeouts remaining. Tigers have two. The win would move the Wildcats to four and two in conference and would drop Jackson State to that same number. Here we go. Three minutes left. Jackson State will be looking for some big buckets here. Will they come from Ken Evans Jr., their leading scorer? He is fouled and fouled hard. Under the basket will go to the line. That'll get Zion Harmon for the foul. That'll be his third, so Zion's got to be careful the last couple of minutes. Yep. It's always, you know, you don't want your key players in foul trouble because if it comes down to having to foul other players, now you have a guy who you can't really have foul anybody. You have to send somebody else. This makes it a little, it takes more time off the clock and stuff like that. Ken Evans Jr. on the season shoots free throws at almost 80%, 79.1. And in the ball game is five for five. But he misses. And it's, it's a two shot penalty, guys. I know there's been a lot of and ones recently. Zeke Cook comes back to replace Trayon Johnson. Jackson State from the line today, just 56.3%. Under their season average of 70. Way under, but Ken Evans hits that one. 75-67, 2.49 to go. Harmon into the front court. Backs down Adams. Adams falls over, but the Wildcats will cycle back to the top. Willoughby to Reggie Ward. Kick out for DJ. Willoughby, he drives, he gets fouled. Oh, and he just doesn't get the and one opportunity, but Seneca Willoughby will go to the line. Almost makes that extremely tough shot. Doesn't know, but still gets sent to the line, and it, it took a while for that possession to really, you know, to take that shot, and that's exactly what you want in this situation. Take as much time off this clock as you can. You know, the Tigers still have two timeouts left. The Wildcats have three. Both teams in the bonus. That was Willoughby's first shot attempt of the day. As the first free throw is no good. Willoughby, just a 64% free throw shooter, and he only has 25 attempts on the year. And he didn't play much in non-conference and then has deputized with a couple of other players, including Jason Matthews, Yusuf Tamara, in place of Zion Harmon when Harmon was out with an injury. Good on the second one. 76, 67, 2.30 to go. The Tigers have to do something quick and in a hurry. Adams has the ball in his hands, almost travel with it. He cook out high, Ken Evans Jr. Top of the key, mid-ranger, no good. Rebound comes right to Jacoby Hetty. And the Wildcats will take some time off the clock. Slowing down play. Don't get too excited. You don't have to go on the fast break, run in transition. You're, you're oh, up. nice move by Seneca Willoughby. <laughs> and again, he wants none of that Jackson State front court. No. <laughs> Lob. Oh! It's a bolt from the blue. As Jacoby Hetty may have just turned the lights oh. out on this game, but it's not over yet. And Ken Evans Jr. hits a three timeout Jackson State. Eight point lead, 142 to go. But that lob came out of nowhere. Oh my goodness. Got to, but got to his side, and that's what Coach Diaz is yelling at them about. That, you know, cheering to the crowd and all that ends up costing them a D3. So now you lost that possession. It's a one, you know, you technically, they scored an extra point on you. It's an eight point lead instead of a, a 10 or 11 point lead with 142 left. Zion Harmon has a game high 23 points. He only has five points in the second half. <laughs> yeah. And I want to point out somebody 
Reggie Ward Jr. already has a double double. He does, 12 points, 12 boards, and he's only played 24 minutes, and he hasn't played most of the last 10 minutes. It's been uh, Willoughby in there in his spot. Very optimal play out of Reggie Ward. Almost a double double for John uh, Johnson there. Yeah, 10 rebounds, seven, seven points nice. for Trayon Johnson. And then Adams has eight <laughs> assists and only four points. Another player on double double du double double watch. That's the thing about these high scoring kind of games. You get a lot of players, especially as much as many shots as we've seen. 68 shots from Jackson State and 60 yeah. by the Wildcats. You're going to get a lot of rebounds, and that's not including the one and ones that we've seen towards the tail end. And Chase Adams plays that facilitator role very well. He has the lead on the team in assists at 78. And we knew going back to the offensive rebound situation, right, where Jackson State leads 17 to 9 in that category, we knew it was going to be a tough game because Jackson State is second in the SWAC in rebounds per game and offensive rebounds per game, second only to Alabama State, who they beat 73-63. Chase Adams is second in the SWAC in assists per game, 4.7, so he is going to increase that number with eight assists today. Minute 42 left, 78 points for the, the Wildcats, 70 points for the Tigers. A lot of cats and, and tigers and all that kind of stuff in the swag. Oh, oh but soon Cookman throws the ball away again. Off the inbounds pass, Cook fouled by Reggie Ward. And the Wildcats wonder why that's not a charge. Ward picks up his first foul of the game, funnily enough. He has a double-double with no fouls until now. But Dope. they will put... Cook. Zeke Cook at the line. Double-double with no fouls and double-double with rebounds, mind you. Not even assists or anything. Missed the first one from Cook. 10 of 19 at the free throw line for Jackson State. A massive reason why the Wildcats have hung on to this lead despite fading down the stretch. Cook hits the second one. Front rim, back rim in, timeout Bethune Cookman. Southeast Toyota Dealers is proud to support Bethune Cookman basketball. Visit your local Toyota dealer or explore Toyota.com today and take advantage of the deals on our full line of vehicles. 78 to 71. Bethune Cookman on top of Jackson State. They'll have the ball with one minute and 34 seconds left. So Really only four possessions left in the game if you're Bethune-Cookman. Uh, Jackson State is going to have to go fast when they have the ball. Yep, Jackson State, which is what they want to do. However, they have to score. They have to make something out of these opportunities. We've seen them get fouls and one and ones and just not hit those free throws. They're 11 for 20 from the line. It's not Ken Evans Jr.'s fault at all, six for seven, but... Some of his teammates have been letting them down at the line. And uh, Johnson has 10 rebounds, 7 points. So if he hits a 3 or something, he'll be on a double-double. We have finals from across the SWAC in women's basketball. Texas Southern beat Alabama A&M 61-55. Florida A&M beat Alcorn State 60-56. Bethune-Cookman fell to Jackson State 81-65. Grambling State... Survived a late comeback by Mississippi Valley State, 81-71. Prairie View beat Alabama State in a low-scoring contest, 46-43. And Arkansas Pine Bluff bounces back from a loss to BCU last week to beat Southern, 74-59. Harmon floats it up to Dyson into the front court. 1.32 to go in an eight-point Wildcat lead. Correction, seven-point lead. Willoughby wide open. They're just trying to play some keep away. Almost a slip there by Jacoby Hetty. Nine to shoot now. Willoughby drives, kicks it. DJ, that's a long two, and he got it! He has hit two massive long two-pointers down the stretch in this game. One, mi one minute to go, 80 to 71 Bethune-Cookman. 
Evans drives, slips, loses the ball. Oh. And then Harmon turns it right Just. back over, trying to get into the front court. Offensive foul. Kiwan Johnson threw an elbow as he tried to go baseline. That was almost disaster for the Wildcats. Zion Harmon had the ball and he just throws it, trying to get it to the front court, get as much time off the clock as possible. Ends up back in the Tigers' possession and then uh, just, you know, one of those kind of offensive fouls. Throw your elbow out, trying to move your man and catches someone in the, you know, jaw and upper chest. The ref's gonna see that and call that especially in the close game. Wildcats by nine, 43 seconds to go. They try and trap, long pass is on the money to DJ Carter Hollinger. Wildcats will just try and play keep away. Into the corner, Deshaun Dyson, so behind the back. Oh, Deshaun Dyson hasn't had a banner game. Only eight points for him, but he gets that one to sink down. Penn Evans Jr. down the lane, didn't miss the layup. And this, game is over. Wildcats will protect home court again. They go to four and two in the SWAC. Six, or excuse me, seven and one at home on the season. They win this one, 82 to 71. And as the clock ticks down to zero, this one belongs to the Maroon and Gold. They had to see out a strong run late from Jackson State, but the Wildcats hold court at home. Yes, a Jackson State team that is facing some injuries, but still a great performance by the Wildcats. They finished with 82 points. They will increase their season average. It was at 74. They're scoring the second most points per game in the SWAC, only behind Southern. And from a team last year that at times struggled to find offense, even with Zion Harmon in the lineup, the addition of Jacoby Hetty has made Harmon and Dyson, and maybe to a lesser extent, a player like Reggie Ward, so much more effective because he draws that attention. Yep, and <clears throat> an amazing performance from the Wildcats. Only a couple things, you know, that they gotta work on. You can't fade as much as you, were fa you faded this game. You know, even though you had that big lead, this game shouldn't have been this close down the stretch with how you perform. If you can't let a team just come back, you can't kind of get flustered like that and cause all those turnovers to allow them to keep possession. And not for lack of trying from the Tigers, however, Ken, uh, Ken Evans Jr. had a standout performance, 19 points, seven rebounds, six assists in the team leading 36 minutes. Chase, uh, Chase Young, had uh, Colty. Yeah, uh, Colty Young. Colty yeah. Young. I don't even know who Chase Young well, there's is. There's Colty Young, and then there's Chase Adams. Yeah. You got them confused. You got right. the C's mixed up. <laughs> my apologies. 16 points. Played most of that game with four fouls. Hats off to him. 33 minutes. Let's officially go through your final scoring totals. Presented by Toyota. Southeastern Toyota Dieters Toyota. Let's go places. Ken Evans, a, a team high 19 for Jackson State on 5 of 18 shooting. Three of seven from three and six or seven from the line. We will come back to that stat in a moment. Young had 16. Johnson had nine. The other Johnson had seven. So that's um, Kiwan Johnson with nine and Trayon Johnson with seven. Cornelius had six. Cook five. Hunt five. And Adams four. Zeke Cook had nine rebounds. Johnson had ten rebounds for the best rebounding team in the SWAC. They overall had 40 when they average 36.7 rebounds a game, and a lot of those were offensive. For Bethune, Cookman, Zion Harmon had 18 points in the first half and finished with 23. Eight of 15 from the floor, four of eight from deep, and three of four from the line. Jacoby Hetty had 20. DJ Carter Hollinger had 14, including huge buckets down the stretch. Two long twos with the toe on the line, almost threes, that kind of iced the game for Bethune, Cookman, when Jackson State looked like they may come all the way back. Reggie Ward had 12, DJ Carter Hollinger had 14, already said that. Dyson had 10 on a cold night for him, just four for 10 from the floor, but again, had a couple of buckets big down late. James Henderson Jr. had two points, but four rebounds and five assists and a team high three steals. Good night for number 33. And Seneca Willoughby, just the one point. No official field goal attempts, but one of two from the free throw line. 
Team Stats, Wildcats ended up out-rebounding Jackson State 41 to 40, as close as it can get. Jackson State won the offensive rebounding battle 17 to nine. <coughs> Excuse me, Wildcats had more assists 24 to 19. Wildcats turned the ball over 17 times, Jackson State 15 times. Jackson State had five blocks, two Bethune Cookman's three, but 27 points on the fast break for Bethune Cookman to Jackson State seven. The story of the game was this game was wide open, both teams running the floor over and over again. Uh, a lot of the time, uh, the crowd didn't know which way was up. There were buckets flying in left and right. 16 steals for Jackson State, something for Bethune Cookman to clean up before Monday night's ESPN showdown with Alcorn. 10 steals for the Wildcats. 22 points off turnovers for Bethune Cookman, 21 for Jackson State. 42 points in the paint for Bethune Cookman. That was the big stat on the night. The other big stat on the night is Jackson State 55% from the free throw line, 11 of 20. And a lot of those were misses on one and ones where they passed up a potential for two more points. So the, the score, right, is 82-71. It's an 11-point win. This could have been so much closer, even though the Wildcats did almost blow a 21-point lead of the game. Yeah, it could have been so much closer, but it could also have been so, so much of a bigger lead for the Wildcats. You know, this is... This was a very good offensive performance from the Wildcats, except for those moments where they faded away. When they started fading and they just started playing, however, when they kept trying to play fast and loose when they were up big, kind of threw off their momentum and allowed the Tigers to get back into the game. But otherwise, defensively, they did a good job stifling them. 36% from the field is winning. But if you're defensively, is very much so winning basketball. Yep. Didn't, you know... Uh, didn't get out rebounded by a ton, which helps a lot. A lot more, you know, 24 to 19 in assists. Did a great job doing that. Overall, great performance from the Wildcats, and you hope to see them continue it on ESPN2 against Alcorn State on Monday. That'll do it from here at More Gymnasium for Cat Eye Network director and producer Eugene Robinson, SID's Bryce Ranowski, and Brian Harvin, my analyst Hanson White, and our entire Cat Eye Network student-run broadcast crew here at Moore Gymnasium. We will see you on Monday at 5 o'clock for the women's game as they take on Alcorn State. And then ESPN is in the building as the Wildcat men take on Alcorn State. Until then, we'll see you next time.